Yo, what up guys? Today we are going to code our own blockchain in Python. Uh, so I was attending a few blockchain seminars last week and you know, I run a company teaching people about IT and programming and all of that. So for me, it's just uh, really fun to teach other people what I know. So today, as I said, we're going to implement our own blockchain. We're only going to implement the basic block functionality, a basic blockchain. We're not going to do any Merkle trees, any transactions, because we will do that later on. So you can see this as a set of videos where we will explore, well, how blockchain works and how we can implement them in Python. So I've already written this code, actually, and it's on my GitHub. Uh, so you can go find it there and you can experiment and, you know, do whatever you want with it and read it uh, in a relaxed manner. But for the sake of clarity and for, you know, teaching you as much as possible, I'm going to write it on the fly here as well. We're going to implement it from scratch so uh, we can see uh, how it works and I can explain for you how I think when I construct it, okay? So here you can see me. I'm in the terminal here. I have a Vim file open for uh, the block.py. So that's going to be where we implement our block functionality. And I hope the uh, Vim, well, everything is big enough for you here so you can see what it says. I'll actually make it even bigger, even though I hate when it's big. Uh, so uh, that's good. Okay, let's get going. So first of all, we have to uh, well, create our class. We're going to create the class for the block. And what are we going to take in here? Well. We have to take the previous block hash because that's how blockchain works, right? We take the previous block hash, we take it into account when we do our own uh, hashing or this current block. So we're going to take the previous block hash. We're going to take the data and a timestamp. So timestamp is, you know, when the block is going to be created. So let's uh, do it like this. So uh, now we're just assigning it to, to this very uh, object here. And self dot timestamp is equal to timestamp. Okay, so that's our constructor there. Mm. And one more thing we have to add is a function here to create our own hash. So we're gonna create a, a hash value for this very block, right? So uh, our own hash, we're gonna create a function called get hash. All right. So this hash function would take all of the data in our block header and run it through SAH256 two times uh, with an inner and outer encryption to uh, well ensure that well, the block isn't compromised, that the hash can't be changed. Um, so we're going to create that very hash value, uh, hash function first. So let's define the function get hash. And the get hash function is only going to take in this very object because it has all the data it needs in this object. So first of all, we're going to create a binary representation of the uh, header uh, strings in this very case. So that's going to be, well, all the data we have here in our header. And our header in this case is the previous block hash, it's the data, and it's the timestamp. So let's do it like this. We have our, we got a plus there. Um, we have the self.previous block hash, self.data, and self.timestamp. So what we're going to do here as well is to encode this using the encode function. So we encode this to uh, well, a binary representation. All right. And what we're going to do now is create the inner hash. So we're going to use a library in Python called uh, hashlib, uh, import hashlib. So it gives us a lot of uh, you know encryption and hashing uh, uh, functionality so we don't have to implement it ourselves. So the inner hash is going to be hashlib.shah256 and we're going to do our header binary and we're going to uh, hex stage, we're going to do two hex and we're going to encode it once again so we can run it in our outer hash function. That's also hashlib sah256 uh, and it's going to take the inner hash this time, not the header binary, and it's going to do hex digest. So out of this, we will get, well, a hash value that's been uh, that ran two times here uh, in, uh, in our hash function. All right, cool. So uh, now we have created a block that, you know, can take in the previous block hash. It can, you know, we can assign data to it. We have timestamps. We can hash it so we can see, you know, that it's, uh, go back and see that it, it hasn't been tampered with. 
so uh, another main problem we have here is that we have to create our genesis block, right? So uh, let's define that function. Define create genesis, genesis block, all right? And what do we assign, you know, what data do we have in the genesis block? Well, for this um, very genesis block, I'll just, you know, give it the value zero for previous block hash, zero for data, and we're gonna use a timestamp, and we're gonna, you know, take the current time. So we're gonna use date time for that. That's a library in Python that you can use. So it looks like this date time dot now. So we have to import that as well. So import date time. All right, cool. Um, another thing here is not has nothing to do with blockchains, but you know every instance of, of a block class here doesn't have to uh, define the crazy genesis block so we're gonna make that a static method uh, you can check that out it doesn't have to do anything with blockchains but check it out it's a good thing to know um, okay cool so we have everything we need now for our block so let's create our blockchain so I'm gonna create a file here in my source folder called uh, blockchain.py and this is where we're gonna implement our blockchain I'm just gonna see how it did it, so it looks the same for you when you go on GitHub. All right, so first of all, let's just try to create a block and see what it, you know, says. So maybe we can say that block. And first, we have to import uh, block. Okay, and uh, maybe we can do it like this even from block that import the class block because that's the only thing we need. So let's try to create a genesis block and see what the genesis block hash looks like, okay? So uh, b1 equals uh, um, block.create genesis print b1.hash. So let's print it out here. So if you look down here, you can see that I have my terminal where I run everything. Uh, so let's run blockchain. Okay, cool. So we see that we created the Genesis block and it has the hash value that we see down here, right? So it works uh, very fine. But so how should we create our blockchain? We know that blockchains, that every block, uh, uh, you know, apart from the Genesis block, depends on all the previous block, right? The children, every child has the parent's hash value in its uh, hash as well. It takes into consideration when it calculates its own hash, as we can see here on line 16, that we take the previous block hash in account when we create uh, the hash for this very block. But we can see this as a list, right? Where, okay. So I'm just gonna plot it out for you really fast. We didn't prepare this uh, showing it like this, so. As we can see here, we see it as a list, right? So we have the Genesis block here, the first one, and then we have every other block. So this block here, it takes this block into account, the Genesis block, its hash value, and its own data in here. And this very block here, it takes the hash value from this one into account, but you know, this one takes this one into account, so it goes all the way back. Um, so we can represent this as a list. It's a data structure often used in programming. So let's do that. Let's create a little uh, list that we can use. So let's call our list a blockchain. And uh, in our list here, we can you know create it with one element, for instance. And that very one element would be Genesis block, right? So we can fill our list with uh, with uh, one block, and that would be the Genesis block. Okay, so let's print that out just to see that it works. The genesis block has been created. All right, well, let's print uh, the hash value of that genesis block. The hash value would be, um, mm -hmm. and we have here, we have the blockchain, and we pick out the last element dot hash okay so what we're doing here we're printing out you know the genesis block has been created we print and we use you know uh, an s here represents a string and what we give this very fun print function here is one string and that is the 
string hash value of the last element in the blockchain list. And we only have one element in our blockchain list and that is the Genesis block. So we can see here the Genesis block had been created with this hash value, okay? So let's say now that we want to add maybe, we want to add nine elements to the list or 10 elements to the list, okay? 10 blocks to our blockchain. Num blocks to add equals 10, okay? So what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna create uh, uh, all of our blocks here, so 10 of them. Um, you can see that I did plus one there because it's not inclusive. And we start from one since the first element would be the uh, Genesis block in our list here. So if you don't know anything about lists or data structures, what I'm doing here might be very far-fetched and be like, what is he doing? Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry for that, uh, but it's, uh, it's kind of a prerequisite for me to do not stop every second and explain what's happening. If you're having trouble to following the Python code here, I really recommend you to go to Code Academy and do their Python tutorial. It's, it's absolutely fantastic and you learn so much. And when you've done that, you could come back and well, then you will understand everything. So now we're gonna add our uh, next block in our chain, right? We're gonna create another block here. So let's do our block chain dot append. So append another block to our block chain. And here we create a block. And you know, what do we take here in the constructor for the block? We take the previous block hash, the data stamp, the data and a timestamp. All right. So the previous block hash is quite easy because we can do block chain minus one. So the last element in the list, the previous one dot hash. All right. And the uh, second one, in second value would be our data. In this case, we call it data. Uh, and then we're going to have the timestamp. Once again, we're going to go use daytime date time dot date time dot now and like that boom we have created another block in our blockchain depending on the hash value of the previous block so this will go on and on and on right the so first one it takes the genesis block hash but the other ones will take the previous block one and uh yes to print this out as well to show you uh let's do that so let's do print block and what number do we have here? We have block i has uh, been created, okay? And that would be i. And then block hash. So what is the hash value here? And that would be block chain dot hash. So let's run this, see, we'll have, see what it works. Oh, that's a problem. Ah, right. Uh, and then we're gonna have or the hash value, of course. Um, I'm gonna take i. All right, cool. So I'm gonna go down here so we can see how it works. So we see here that the genesis block was created and it had that hash value. And then block one has been created and it has this hash. Block two has been created and it has this hash. So we can see they all have unique hash values, right? And this is how simple it is to just create a basic blockchain, um, you know, not having any worker trees or transactions, just a basic blockchain, uh, a data structure that takes in the consideration of all, you know, the parent when it's creating itself so we can see if it's been tampered with. So guys, I hope that you uh, well got a feeling for how you can use Python to create a simple, you know, blockchain, just like we did. Uh, and this is, of course, available open source. And I will put the link, as I said, down here in the description to the GitHub repository that, you know, it shows you all the code and you can go through it. You can download it to your computer. You can try it out, maybe uh, make some changes for uh, your own blockchain implementation. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, uh, stay tuned for the next upcoming videos. We're gonna implement multiple trees. We're gonna have transactions. We're gonna see how that works. We'll see, you know, how we'll do it. But it's gonna be a kind of a tutorial series where we go further and further and further and further into how blockchain works. And in that very sense, we're soon gonna learn so much together because I'm learning at the same time as you are. So guys, have an absolutely fantastic day, and I'll talk to you soon. Again.